Hey everyone, Joey G with Touch of the Brush Model Weathering. And uh, this video, we're going to show how I weathered the Scale Trains BNSF number 4313 9 locomotive. And woo, this is a beautiful, beautiful detailed model. And I give big thumbs up to Scale Trains for doing their thing. I mean, they, they make some great stuff. So we're going to get started here. And this is a step by step process how I do things. Uh, with the business as far as um, weathering is concerned. Um, let's see here. Right now we're taking it out of the box. That's pretty important in order to get started. And I wish I had my face here, uh, face expression, because I was just dumbfounded at the detail. And I was doing the best I can taking out all the parts that hold it in place when shipping and holding it in place here. I do have our cat, Axe. He's watching with us. He'll be uh, narrating with us, too. As you can see, I'm trying to put everything back together here. But I'm going to show you certain things that I do as far as the weather is concerned. This is an older camera, so hopefully it does some justice with the uh, modeling. So here we got some matte clear medium spray paint. I first thing I do is completely cover all the important parts like the, the wheels and the trucks and the windows and the number boards and obviously all the ditch lights, headlights, rear lights and rear, rear ditch lights if they have it and um, I spray some dull coat that's the first step here it gives them the ease of the locomotive right away now depending on the process and um, how the length of time I have to do certain things I take a blow dryer on the coolest level that way it um, cools down and actually dries the um, matte medium clear spray on top of the locomotive just to quicken up the process a little bit here so here we are gonna untape it as carefully as I possibly can um, with um, with you know with the tape here the masking tape now we're gonna start the wheel process it seems here and this is I use some acrylics some flat brown and black that I mix together uh, Dan's Raro 2011 I think he's his YouTube channel great weatherer and a great modeler. I learned some of these techniques from him and and uh, he shows that in a lot of his videos here. Again, we all learn from each other, so nothing is really something I have invented. Um, so here I got some of the light paint and what I do is I, I use a little wash with um, probably 60% water, 40% paint and I go along the trucks here. And sometimes some streaking, but I uh, let it dry and I do another coat on top of it. Um, the wheels here are, are I want some see-through with the silver coming through so I really wanted um, the wheels to sh the uh, the silver to turn out so you can see here I am on the low on the lowest uh, level here of um, the uh, blow dryer just drying it up a little bit while I'm painting it through so I'll start another coat you can see how it's right weathering up pretty well um, and I'm uh, going underneath in the insides here uh, underneath the trucks, underneath the body frame, and here we are starting the fuel tank. The fuel tank's pretty much the same uh, concept, and uh, it, it, it just depends on the um, the kind of weathering I want to do. Sometimes it's just a dry um, chalks or powders. Sometimes it's just pure paint right on it, and I let it dry. Sometimes it's a wash. It just depends on what I want the locomotive to look like so here <laughs> I kind of didn't like the way it was going so it kind of uh, raced some of it um, but I left a lot of really it really soaked into the the detail like the fuel gauges and um, the little little lines in, inside the fuel tank the little seams over there so I got I went again try a different technique so you know sometimes different techniques happen and this one came out a lot smoother with less streaking um, it was more of a solid form as you can tell the difference here now we're doing the uh, rear trucks on this side here again look at the details on these engines they're unbelievable and the chains everything you know everything's plastic everything moves nothing breaks you know you get a lot of other uh, models where you just the slightest little thing and it just pops and breaks and you gotta take an hour to try to glue it down and here um, I learned this technique on my own I uh, used a little washcloth to covered the uh, handrails because the first time I tried to do this again plastic handrails a lot of heat you know they end up warping so we don't want that so I um, learned that from a couple of mistakes and I um, uses the um, washcloth 
Now we get the magic powders. Um, I forget the name of the uh, powders here, but I bought them in uh, the, um, one of the, the Model Bond store in Pennsylvania. And uh, I forgot the name of the town. It's been a couple of years. Um, I did have a video of the tour of the shop, but these uh, powders are from there. I am using um, like a boxcar gray, a lighter gray, and some a little bit of black, a little bit of brown in the mix. And I'm using the same gray to go over the entire body of the locomotive. Again, you have that adhesive, that, that matte clear on top of it already. So it was a, that, that dull coat. So it really seeps into the, the, uh, the model, into the plastic. Um, does a really good job. And, you know, different layers of adhesive. Um, and I mean adhesive, I mean matte clear. So you spray, um, you know, every time you do it for certain layers. Um, but uh, let's see here. Did you hear Axe in the background? He's hanging out with me. Um, but he's trying to go near my foot. And I'm still, you know, I'm still healing here. Hey, my buddy. There you go. So now we got the rooftop. Rooftop, and again, doing a wash with... Um, 60 to 40 black paint just plat, flat black paint uh, the client really wants the rooftop to be really 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 black really filthy um, so barely you see some gray seeping in I get all through the nooks and crannies all inside the little grills a lot of stupid details on top you see uh, all the um, uh, the holes uh, I forget the names of them um, <laughs> this medicine that they had me on here uh, really makes me forget certain things and you know be nice to be off of it after I'm healed up but um, they're, 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 they're the um, you put the chains in them and hold the locomotive in the air when they need servicing um, so uh, you got all those little details on the tops of the rooftops up that way and um, here I got the um, soot black powder that I'm using weathering powder so I'm getting while the paint is just a little bit uh, bl um, dry, I'm using that on top. You know, so kind of um, that's the way it won't like fly off or blow off or fingerprints. You know, take it off eventually over time by using usage of locomotive. And you can see some of the techniques here. I am swirling it. It really gets into that model into the plastic um, when I do that. And you can see here just the top of the rooftop what it looks like. So let's see, what are we doing now here? We're going, ooh, we're doing the sides of the locomotive again. Um, again, sometimes it's a couple of layers. I spray in between the mat clear. And uh, just going over the entire body again. I want it darker. The yeah, client wanted a little darker, so we're gonna go darker. Um, they seem really getting it into the sides of the locomotive. And you can see the uh, BNSF sign. It's not as bright as it was. It's not as clean as it was, which is what we want. Here's something I learned from Dan's Railroad. Um, you take a little bit of that, that same 60-40 ratio of water and paint, and you paint in the um, all the radiators and the vents um, as you can really weather them. And uh, use a toothpick, sorry, not a toothpick, a Q-tip to uh, go around them. Uh, to clean them up. Two picks are your best friend when it comes to weathering. And, you know, the paint's still a little wet, and I added some of that uh, soot black. And you can see here how it seeps down a little bit. So while I'm pushing down with the brush, kind of looks like it's spilling out a little bit. So it gives a little bit of that effect while it's still wet. So they went back on the wheels. We're doing the other side of the locomotive. You can see it's a lot cleaner looking. You can see the difference in the weathering. There's no weathering on the body right now, just the wheels. We're giving it um, a good old look on the, uh, the fuel tanks here. and some uh, using my fingers a little bit here to um, get to the little nooks and crannies first. Again, I don't want this fuel tank to be completely filthy. I want it to look like, oh yeah, there's dirt on it, but yeah, there's some silver around, you know? Yeah, use that finger. That's right. The fingers always work. Now right, you can see where I'm at here. It looks uh, where the lo where the wheels look like. See some silver st sticking out, but it looks like it's filthy, you know, dirty, just from being used. Um, 
The fuel tank is the same way, you know, kind of almost unison. I did add some white powders to the very bottom of the, uh, by the wheels and the trucks. And that's just for, in case maybe the uh, locomotive kicked up some new ballast while I was on the road. So I added that. And uh, let's move the camera up here. Give us a closer look. I'm actually happy the way the camera came out. It looked really dark when I was filming. But you can see here, um, see how that, that, that gray is really making that engine look really good. Yeah. Got a lot of hits on the on Facebook and on my page, as well as all the Facebook groups I posted um, with this locomotive. Very pleased, and you know it was really nice to see the great comments out there on Facebook and all that. It was really cool. Um, but see, I'm doing the same thing with the vents and the radi uh, the radiators in the back with the all these vents here. See how they're blacking out. It's okay if they look out just a little bit, you know. Um, they stick out a little bit, and that's okay because they do in real life. Some do, some don't. Depends on the prototype of the locomotive. He wants them really sticking out. Um, these were a little. Uh, these vents here were kind of um, <laughs> a little bit, uh, a little sloppy. They're really hard to get into, uh, and it's just because sometimes I don't want to take off the railings. Not that I'm lazy. It's they're pain neck to get back in. Sometimes they break, and then you gotta wait for it to glue them. It's just extra steps. Um, I don't, you know, I try to not damage anything that I work on. You know, don't want to. Um, you can see the gray on top of the BNSF with the BN is. See that? See that gray on top of the, the yellow is. Woo! Yeah, we got some of that um, going. Yeah, it's a little bit of a um, little bit of spill, a little smoke spill. This is just on behind on by the smokestack. Um, again, using that black, soot black with the um, the wash again, um, same thing. And yeah, very, very simple with the brush. Sometimes you use your finger. Um, maybe a fan brush will work when you do some streaking, like rust streaks and stuff. Same, same, same concept. Um, let's see, what am I doing here? Did the rooftop where the PTC is up there? Clean the PTC. I had the other one pretty filthy looking. This one, I want to look nice and clean. It looks like it just got washed or they put a brand new uh, sight line on top. Um, on the PTC. Is it PTC? I forget what those things are. Maybe it's the air conditioning unit. Who knows? Maybe it's, maybe it's a UFO just stuck up there. Um, let's see here. We're doing the front of the locomotive. Yeah, it's kind of dark. I apologize for that. But yeah. Doing the same deal with the body of the locomotive. The front is uh, interesting to do. A lot of ladders, a lot of details. Um, I see it covered the uh, the window and the headlights and obviously the uh, the window of the doorway, the number boards. It looks like it got big eyebrows, but there there's what the locomotive currently looks like with all the steps we just took on this journey of making this thing look filthy. It looks pretty good. I really like the way it came out. I said, so, "Ooh, yeah, looky, looky." Yeah. See how the sides came out. So now we're doing the plows. The plow. The plows are. Uh, it's a mix of mostly brown, a little bit of black, but just darken the brown up a little bit. And 60/40 wash with the water and the paint. Getting all the nooks and crannies here. Really make it look filthy. It's really been on the road. It's really doing its job. It's a workhorse been all over the country, make a look at, you know, and then we blow dry it a little bit, I got top of the ditch lights on the railings themselves, um, don't like filthing them up a lot, the railings, only because I like the white, it looks, it really pops, makes the engine pop, so we go back with some brown, some boxcar gray, boxcar dust, and, uh, some of that uh, rust, mix those two together on this. Sometimes I add some black to it too, so you get some, some black in there. But there you have it, there's the locomotive. Again, Skill Trains does a beautiful, beautiful job with their engines. And um, I like to do more of these videos. Um, I do have a couple of videos of me modeling, uh, well, painting the uh, 
another BNSF engine number 4466, another Dash 9 from Scale Trains, and I'm making it look like a toaster. Uh, I'm also doing a few Norfolk Southern SD70 Spartan cabs, which are going to be the same deal. Some going to be heavily weathered, others going to be lightly weathered like this. So I um, also have a CSX engine. So uh, I may do some more videos of this. If you guys en enjoy doing these kind of, enjoy watching these videos, uh, just let me know in the comments below. And uh, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, like this uh, video. Um, I really appreciate everybody's support. And, um, and of course, uh, with the healing process of my foot, it's um, great for everybody's prayers. Really appreciate it. Enjoy, enjoy this hobby. I enjoy the business I'm in with weathering trains and um, painting and decaling for clients around the country and meeting people all over the country and all over the world. It's awesome to hang out with people all over the world. All right, I'm going to be quiet here and let you guys get on with your day. Thank you for watching. This is Joey G with Touch of the Brush Model Weathering.